What's up, guys? You know what? I have been a grumpy Gus over the last few days. And uh, you know something, guys? I had a, ended up having a really good weekend, had an amazing date night with the wife. Yesterday, we hung out all day, just me and the wife, went and saw a play downtown Phoenix, came home, played some video games, played some Star Wars Battlefront, haven't played that in a long time, uh, trying to get back my, my skills back. And I was shocked that so many people still play that game um the servers were full the games were full i was having a blast killing guys and man that that, that kind of made me feel better i don't know i don't know if that makes me crazy or not either way guys uh we got a lot we want to talk about tonight we're going to talk about toy shock got some updates for you on the toy shock line we also have uh something interesting uh coming out of the unico mvsx camp um as well as we got updates regarding at games arcade one up and i arcade we got a lot of stuff. It's going to be a fun I Hate Monday show. I'm glad you're here. Let's rock, guys. Hey, who, who's this? Who's this? What are you doing? What are you doing coming in here? You sent a link. <laughs> <laughs> Rubicon says, P-Dubs, you're just sad about breaking up with Arcade 1-Up. Well, I wouldn't say I've broken up with them. I would just say it's hard to continue to purchase their products with those price increases, although I can't afford it. I don't want to pull the trigger on some of these cabinets at those prices. Definitely, if I was being selective before, I'm now moving into ultra-selective territory. Um, with these higher prices. Mike, how was your show? I only got to watch a few minutes of it tonight. Did you have a good show? Yeah, pretty good show. Uh, good conversation. You know, can't ask for anything better than that. I was in a good mood the whole time. Yep, yep. Guys, we got a live poll going in the chat right now for our first topic. Are you interested in the Toy Shock tabletop pinball machines? Make sure you guys go ahead and answer that poll question on the stream. We'll go over the results here in just a minute. What's really cool, Mike, and I'm surprised you didn't use this on your show, is you know how we would always do our live streams and always be like, hey, if uh, if you guys are interested, press one. Hey, if you guys are interested, give me a give me an A in the chat. You know what I mean? Totally stupid, right? Well, yeah. YouTube YouTube rolled out an update last week for all content creators where now these live polls are supported in your live streams. So now we can simply put in the polls, put in the <laughs> answers. People Sorry. can ask the questions. The data is automatically calculated for us. No more saying. And all YouTubers are using it. I saw a bunch of live streams this week. A lot of YouTubers were taking polls during their live streams. And it's a great way for you guys to connect with the show. So we're very excited about it. Uh, but before we do that, I want to show you guys something kind of funny, if you guys can indulge me. So I have, I have a lot of packages that get delivered to my house in this hobby. I don't know about you guys. Mike, I'm assuming, do you have a lot of packages that get delivered? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So every day I either have Amazon or USPS or FedEx dropping stuff off. And if you guys want to see, I got a funny video for you guys here. So my normal FedEx guy, he knows about my dogs. I have three monster dogs. I got this half German Shepherd Husky, this half German Shepherd Collie, and then I have this Pitbull Terrier mix, right? Three monster dogs. And whenever people come to the door, they act like it's World War Three, right? So, Mike, if you could mute that phone so it stops beeping during the show, that would be great. That'd be a pretty good idea. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Because this clip is kind of, it's kind of hard to hear the audio, guys, but we had a new FedEx driver. Uh, I guess my normal guy was out. So this FedEx guy shows up and my dog scared the crap out of him. He's walking up to my house and I got it on my doorbell camera. He's walking up to my house and you'll see instantly he does this big like jump. When the, he sees the dogs by the door, and then when he when he goes to put the package down, he starts complaining. Let's check this out, guys. This is hilarious. All right, buddy. Let's, oh, shit. I can't even take a picture. I wanted to take a picture. That was dope. Now we got to go. So if you watch that video, he, he comes up to the door. He does a little stutter when he sees the dog staring out the window at him. All three dogs staring out the window. And then 
he puts the package down, damn near slams it. And he go, you know how they like to take a picture of it, like by your doorstep? He's like, I was going to take a picture. You hear him going, I was going to take a picture, but he's too scared. Then the dog started barking at him. Yeah. And then he goes like this. And then you hear him say, you're never going to get me. You're never going to get me. <laughs> it was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Oh, man, that was a lot of fun. All right. So let's dive into our first topic, guys. So uh, we haven't had any we haven't been able to report on anything from the toy shock camp in a while, Mike, because they've been relatively quiet. Yeah, we got it. We got an update today. So everyone who's waiting, uh, who has a version 1.1 pinball machine, uh, who still did not receive their version 1.3 upgraded PCB boards, looks like uh, per Linda Falky, Jeff Falky, CEO, his uh, his lovely spouse, that the PCB boards have uh, completed the manufacturing process. They are on their way to the United States, should be here within the next couple of weeks, and then they're going to start mailing them out to everyone else who's still waiting for a replacement uh, PCB board along with an instructional video. So this has been like a year long process for some folks, right? Yeah. And excuse me if I'm wrong about this, but this is not the 1.2. This is the 1.3 PCBs. They're now yes. shipping out, right? Yes. 1.3 PCB boards. So um, very long process. I totally understand folks' frustration. So for instance, Mike, I had been waiting, I feel like five, six months for the patch for the arcade one-up pinball machines, and that patch still hasn't been released yet. And it's like driving me nuts. Just leave the cap off. Just leave the cap off. The, the twisting. Every episode, the twisting. It's, it's, it's building. It's building. Just leave the cap off. And you know what's funny is... Um, the uh the ridiculous um you know we haven't gotten the update we haven't even they haven't even officially said hey everyone the update's coming right the only thing that happened is arcade went up said in a couple of service support emails that people sent in they said oh we're going to do an update right has there mike have i missed it has there been an official announcement from arcade one up that they're going to release updates on these pinball machines no official update no official update all right so that's what stinks right because a lot of us have been waiting five, six months for an update, and we've heard behind the scenes there might be an update coming. But why can't Arcade One Up simply send out a message saying, hey, guys, there's an update coming, right? Toy Shock, although it's taken them a year to fix their problem, they've managed to still keep the community notified. Hey, guys, the fix is on the way. Hey, guys, the fix is on the way. Hey, guys, the fix is on the way. You know what I'm saying? Mike, you look sad about the cap. <laughs> 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 you seem angry. <laughs> I'm not angry. Uh, look at it. Zohar says, don't swallow. Cap it one more time. I dare you. Yeah, put that. <laughs> put that. Mike, do it. Mike, go. Er, 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 the, a loud cap. I need so, to get you a sippy cup, Mike. I'm going to get you a sippy cup for the next. I, I still got a couple downstairs. Uh, so, uh, Arcade One Up. Uh, they're just not communicating right now, and I don't know why. I don't get it, man. I, I've I've had about 17 different shows where I'm like, you know, just come out and talk to people. You've got Scott there who's like the greatest salesman in the world, and nobody's coming out to say anything. Like, I, I know there's an update coming. I know it's coming relatively soon, but I can't say anything because I don't have any official word. No one does. <laughs> yeah and yeah, everyone's laughing about the cap thing i knew that would be a, i was like on today's if i was like if mike joins my show today guys this was all pre-planned i was like i'm totally gonna narc on him about the cap about the cap because i was actually watching a replay of the super game room dudes right and anytime anyone is talking michael b screwing the cap on screwing the cap off screwing the cap on screwing the cap off it was hilarious it was I'm absolutely... trying. I'm trying to stay hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to stay hydrated, man. Don't be making fun of my cap. Um, okay, so that's what's going on in the world toy shock. Also, when it comes to additional pinball machines as well as tabletop pinball machines, still looking at late third quarter, possibly fourth quarter is what we're hearing, obviously due to their own production delays on getting those in. So if you're interested in the toy shock pinball line, just going to have to wait a couple of more months before you see some pre-orders going live. Although they are taking some pre-orders in Canada right now, Mike, right? Is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, there's pre-orders at both Best Buy and The Brick right now in Canada for, um, yeah, Toy Shock. So we're finally going to be able to get them. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, do I have the date here in front of me? Uh, if you, you can just give me a second. I'll even tell you when they look like they're going to be coming out. All right. Yeah. Hook it up, bro. 
<laughs> Zero Hero says, Michael, raise your hand when you need a drink of water. <laughs> Uh, Tom Garrett, I don't know who this is. He's been putting a couple comments in the chat. Sounds like he's got some info. He says, Zen delivered an initial pinball update months ago, but it actually caused more, and then he left us on the edges of our seats. Is it possible it caused more problems? Is that where he was going? Uh, I'm not sure, but um, I, I, I haven't heard that. The only update that... Uh, oh. Uh, the only update that I know of is... Um, you know, uh, coming soon. I, I don't know anything about a Zen update going out there. Game one off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! People in the live chat are killing me. All right, uh, let's. August seventeenth uh, is right now the uh, release date for Toy Shock here in Canada. All right, guys, we're ending the Toy Shock uh, poll. Let's see if we can get some results on that poll. I don't know when it's going to pop through here. Oh, by the way, Sling Spade did give us a two dollars super chat, saying he has a helmet next to his name i missed his super chat a little while ago all right so according to our poll results are you interested in toy shock tabletop pinball machines 78 percent voted no 21 percent voted yes mike out of 120 votes during our live stream so out of this particular group of folks uh looks like they're not interested in those tabletop pinball machines what do you think about that mike I think most of the people here in our community uh, are looking for mainly the big pinball machines. Like mostly people have ALPs. Like we're not a real countercade type people, but there is a market out there for it. Might not necessarily be us. Do you know what I mean? Like my dad is really excited about these toy shock countertop pinballs. Like I showed him one of those. I told him I'm mm-hmm. going to get one, bring it up to the cabin, told the story a hundred times. Yeah. I, th- I think that's, a, I think that's a different market. I don't necessarily think it's us. There might be some hobbyist curiosity people, but this will be more casual. Hardcore people are going to buy the full size table. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, we got a question from Ty Fisher. He says he's a rookie. How do you get the helmet next to your name? Michael B. How can they get the helmet next to their name when watching the show? You got to join the loft army, brother. Yeah, I got Ty. Look, look, look at the stream right now. Underneath the video you're watching, whether you're watching on PC or mobile device, there's a little button. Click, it's called join. You click the join button, and you can become part of one of the most elite groups in retro gaming, the Loft Army. And if you don't believe me, look at the testimony from Dylan J. Join the army. It will change your life. It's that simple. It's that simple. Kev Gret, his life changed the day he joined the Loft Army. I love you guys. You guys are absolutely the best. Best in class right here. Best in class. All right. So um, let's uh, let's head over here. And uh, first off, let me get another little poll going here. Mike, did you hear the news about Unico MBSX? Did they send you the email that they sent no. me? Okay, no, so I don't think I'm in their influencer group. Right. You guys like MBSX. I'm going to keep these polls nice and simple and quick. We'll just do yes, no. So we've got a new poll coming in. Let's see. Let's gauge this audience whether or not they like the MBSX cabinet. Uh, that little red uh, red pepper cabinet that I got right here behind me. Let me guys know. Do you guys have one? Are you do you like it? Are or are you interested in it? Mark yes. If you're not, put no. Uh, let's start taking that uh, survey in the live chat. So uh, Unico MBSX. It's very interesting. Mike is they sent uh, several YouTubers um, some embargoed information uh, over the weekend. Um, and then they said you can go ahead and leak it, but you can't leak everything. There's actually a huge piece to this um, that we're not allowed to talk about yet. Mm. And so what they're what they're doing is Unico. So everyone's like, what's their what's their next big product? And guys, they're working on several products, several projects. So this wow. LCD monitor replacement that they're doing is just one more thing, right? And it's like, Mike, this is the kind of stuff they should have announced during their E3 presentation instead of a riser, right? I don't know why they didn't I don't know why they didn't announce this during uh during um during that. I I'm not sure either unless they didn't think it was the right place uh because this uh, replacement screen is more for dedicated 
uh, arcade replacement as opposed to uh, they thought maybe they were talking to more of the arcade one up uh, Legends Ultimate fan base, and maybe that wouldn't interest them as much as uh, would be for old school arcade collectors. Look at that. Dan says he likes the new polling system. I like it too, man, because all of us YouTubers have access to it. It's pretty exciting that way, in my opinion. Um, all right, guys. So taking a look here. Uh, so this is just one of the clips that they sent me, as well as several other guys who cover the arcade space. Jay Mason over at SNK. And this is a 26 inch IPS screen. So drop in replacement panels uh, in case wow. their C CRTs go bad. Now they're making a 26 inch and then they, I think the other one was like 22 inches. Uh, Majin says, how do you get this pole screen off? It's blocking the, ch it's blocking the chat. Oh, also, and it's in a five, four aspect ratio, which is pretty nice. We, now we don't have a price. We don't have a release date on this yet. But this is a nice option for those who own real arcade machines. Their CRT has busted, it's crapped out, and they don't feel like going through the whole CRT process again, right? If they want to just say, you know what, it's not true to the original, um, but hey, it's it's a way to get my machine up and running. I have a replacement screen, and it does uh, support VGA and uh, what is that other one, CGA, and they're working on HDMI compatibility as well so hopefully hdmi compatibility will be um part of this also uh so that's that's very interesting so um mike do you think that unico who you know they they're making an arcade machine and then out of the blue they're making screens why are they making screens what's going on with this what, what do you think do you think this is a good move guys let us know in the live chat is this a good move by unico to start moving into the parts modding accessories realm versus giving you more cabinets. Go ahead. Well, I, I, I think options are always a good thing. And I mean, like the biggest piece of discussion in the whole home arcade, like actual real arcade space last little while has been about the uh, downturn in CRTs. CRT prices are going up. They're becoming less and less common. So to see somebody come out with a big screen upgrade, because you can buy usually around a 20 inch monitor pretty easily, but to get a 25 inch is, uh, how big is this? This is 26, right? Yeah, this is the big one right here. This is the, this the big one, the 26. So I think I think uh, what do most cabs have? They have like a 25-inch screen. So someone mentioned that's going to be a tight fit. I'm not 100% sure, but to, to be able to get the big replacement, that's a huge deal. Now, you said it is a 5.4 screen. The uh -huh. other thing I'm a little bit concerned about, um, someone can keep me honest on this, most of those screens, the original ratio was a 4 by 3 and that was a problem with the MVSX Unico cabinet in the first place wasn't it there was some shimmering effects or some dead space where it was a four by three picture compared to a five by four okay mike i feel bad you you can put your cap back on now i feel bad go no, ahead it's okay no, i'll wait no i'll, I'll, wait. I'll, I'll, I'll live with new rules that's fine you've been very angry to me lately i don't understand why <laughs> I'm, a lovely, I'm a lovely canadian man who thinks the world of you I always makes time mike, self available mike, mike you know i love you man you know i love you you know i adore you I can't go to bed at night unless we have that final text together. And Melissa goes, who are you talking to? And I'll be like, Mike from State Farm. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. <laughs> What's he wearing? <laughs> yep. So supposedly the 21-inch will fit inside of the MVSX cabinet. But, guys, I'm not I'm not really seeing it. I'm not. I, I don't think it would. I mean, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing how that could fit. Because this MVSX cabinet... She she ain't big. That's she's smaller than an arcade one up, and it's it's a tight squeeze getting the twenty inch monitors inside the arcade one ups. You know what I mean? So I don't know if it would actually if it would actually uh, fit. Um, but so what's interesting is you know why why would they you know I do not own any real arcades, right, Mike? Although I'm yeah. a retro gaming channel and I cover the arcade space, I don't own any real arcade machines i'm mostly into the emulation multi-cade kind of things i refuse to spend that much money on something that big and heavy it's just you know although i love that stuff mike i love that stuff it's kind of like you you love emulating a real arcade in your basement yeah. but would you ever build a real arcade 
Well, uh, it's funny that you're talking about this now because uh -huh. one of the hardest things about this, well, on top of the nightmares of having the right power supply and making sure you have the right ROM set, but CRTs is the hardest part. The CRT is constantly going down. If there's an easier solution such as this where I can pop one of these into my unit, maybe this makes it easier for me to start working on and collecting real arcades. Mm -hmm. Now, we do have some folks in the live chat saying that... Um they're confident that it would fit so if it would fit that would be great that would be lovely um we'll have to see i mean when i just when i just look at this cabinet like when i just look at it and then look look at this thing on the monitor i'm like is it gonna fit we'll have to see you might have like they said you might have to completely disassemble one half side of the cabinet to get it in there we'll see but uh, there is an important piece to the puzzle about why they're doing this as well for the modding community that is still under embargo, guys. So just so you know, let's let's think about it this way. Why would they send the information to me? Imagine the type of products that I cover on my channel and why they would send the information to me. That's the biggest hint I can give you because I'm not like... You know, hey, I got 90 like Gorf cabinets in my basement, real arcade machines, and I'd like to make some videos about replacing the CRTs with stuff, right? Why would they send the information to me as well as some other retro gaming YouTubers that cover this space? Think about it. Something's coming soon. You guys might want to get hyped about it. Uh, but I can't say anything else. Otherwise, I'll be breaking embargo. That's the biggest teaser I can give you is think about why would they even send this guy the information. All right, let's keep moving on here. So, Mike, I have to say that um, I think we did something pretty good. If you recall, we did a little um, live stream uh, during the middle of the week last week where we were talking about the At Games new four-player control deck. Yep. And we were like, can we make it better? And I noticed that after we did that stream, your show tonight was like Terminator 2, can we make it better? And um, did that inspire you, that show from last week, to, to do kind of do something similar? Would it make you feel good if I said yes? Yeah, just say yes. It would make me feel really good. If not, yeah, to okay. yeah totally. I definitely didn't do a stream year, uh, a couple months ago where I talked about how to make the next driving cab better. But no, it was it was based on the one we did last week. Yeah. Kev Grant says he's drinking duck. <laughs> <laughs> so what's interesting, guys, is this four player control deck coming soon from at games. And we're hearing that guys, they've taken your feedback to heart. This community's feedback, community feedback from our shows, our Facebook groups, all that stuff. And guys, they're going to make it better. They're going to make it better is what we're hearing. So um, what you saw that got announced, revealed, whatever, a week or so ago last week, it's going to be different when it gets released. And I have a feeling, Mike, they took the community's feedback to heart. Yeah. That, that's what I love about some of these arcade and gaming companies. So, But the question is, Mike, what feedback are they going to take? What, what, what changes are they going to make? Now we don't know. I mean, all we've heard is we heard the feedback. We're going to make changes. But, you know, they're not going to tell us or show us until it's ready. So um, there you go. What do you think about that, man? That's pretty cool of that games, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, PK, uh, if you guys ever get the chance to talk to him, like, awesome guy. And uh, one of the things he always says is we listen. Like, they do actually want to listen and make the best product possible. So kudos to them for doing that. Uh, there were some small areas of improvement that could have been made on that uh, four-player cabinet. And I'm glad to see them listening to that feedback because it's going to be more beneficial to them if they bring out a better product. Okay, I'm going to put another quick poll in the live chat for people. Will you buy a four-player control deck from At Games? I'm going to throw that in the live chat. You guys can start answering it. And don't worry if it's blocking your live chat. I'll just leave it up for like the next two minutes or so. So answer it quickly, folks, when you see it pop on your screen so we can get it off of there quickly. <laughs> So My, uh, go ahead. Uh, Ritual go ahead. Adello says a uh, comment there, John respects that game. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you something. John respects everybody. Like, yeah, we did that, <laughs> yeah, we did that, we did that chat with him there the other night. And after the chat, like a couple people got off. John would have stayed on that call with us after the show went off the air till two in the morning, three in the morning, whatever, despite everything he had to do in his life, just because he appreciates the fact that we're interested in this product and he wants to talk to the people that are interested in this stuff. He's the best. John's literally the best. Yeah, so I'm just kind of curious what changes they're going to make to that control deck. Are they going to, obviously, 
Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I did that on purpose. I did that on purpose. Are they going? Are they going to change the button colors? Are they going to adjust the angles on players one and four? Are we going to get that forty-five degree angle? Are we going to get six buttons for players two and three in the middle? That way, if you're a lazy guy like me who just puts it in there and you don't even want to swap it out, even though it's swappable, who knows what they're going to do, right, man? What do you What do you think they're going to do? What do you think they can do? The button colors are hundred percent. There's no way they're leaving those buttons. The colors they were, they were, they were awful. Yeah. The, well, what was it? Blue was it blue and uh, white was yeah. it on the yeah. side that, yeah. that, yeah, that didn't look so great here. Now let me show you something amazing that uh, one of our community members did. Hopefully I can find the post cause it's been a week. I meant to save the picture, but I didn't. So a lot of folks were like, well, how is, uh, how is the, uh, how can you, extend these things so let's give credit where credit is due yeah let's sh let's share the screen because i got feedback on my video a lot of people are like well p-dubs you can't extend the control deck because it's got to fit inside the box right inside the box of the cabinet with the wings sticking out but jason right here uh community member jason Wright, make sure you guys uh check him out i think he's got a youtube channel what is it called carnival carnival of dreams is his YouTube channel something like that? Um, if you guys know the name of his Jay's Chaotic Carnival of Dreams, if you guys know the name of his channel, put it in the live chat for me. I forget it. But if you notice here, he designed this himself. He said, Hey, all you got to do is put some slots right here. Yeah. And that way, if you have the angled controls right here, you could just run the wires through here. You know what I mean? Right through here, run the wires through here. You don't have to worry about trying to jam everything in that middle box and this is an amazing idea and i really hope at games adopts something similar to this go ahead there's one problem with it what's that where's the screw on the side go to affix it to the cabinet uh you're talking about right here yeah that's an interesting point you need a giant screw like that long <laughs> or no or maybe maybe you put the control deck on a hinge on this right that way you could open you set it down open it yeah. screw it in shut it when that yeah that'll, cool? that'll work too 100 percent. yeah maybe put a hinge on this bad boy let's get some hinges up in here <laughs> uh there it is jay's chaotic carnival of dreams this is youtube channel thanks so much rainwater games make sure you do that uh 8 bit brian says or just reach up underneath there you go very cool. So I think this is a great idea, and hopefully At Games will adopt something similar. What we've heard from them is they took all of our feedback to heart, and they're going to make changes uh, prior to it releasing. Um, now, another cool thing that they added in the latest firmware update is if you have CoinOps X on your pinball machine, you can now run videos. Remember before, we, were, we just did an update where you could get like the images of the games on the back glass of the pinball machine. But now you could actually get videos up and running. Has anyone out there gotten this to work yet? Because I have it myself. Um, I need to tinker with it and see see if we can get that uh, get that up and running. Guys, let us know in the live chat. Did you did you um what should we call it? Did any of you try this or know of anyone who's tried this? Let me know. We'll end the poll here. We got 107 votes, and it looks like the majority of folks are not interested in the four-player control deck from at games and that doesn't surprise me mike because it's an accessory and that's why it's an accessory it's not for everybody yeah, yeah. so i see people who actually do have a use for it like they they usually have lots of people come over playing games a lot of them folks are going to be excited about me personally mike i if i got one I don't know if I would ever really use it, right? I might install it and just leave it in as a full-time replacement just in case I have some people come over. Yeah. But I don't think I'm the target market for it myself because I hardly ever have people over. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Like if I had uh, like my my daughter and like my nephew and niece love team, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So if I had them coming over, I might install the four-player deck so we could all play Turtles together. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, Trav, uh, let me see here. I'm trying to find here. I'm waiting for his Tetris Mini. Okay, yeah, Tetris Mini. Can't wait for that. We haven't had an update on that, but the late, the last update was October, right, Mike? Is yep. when those are going to show up. 
Let's see what's going on here. You need three people that are willing to come over. <laughs> Chris says if he had guests, it would be worth it. So yeah, it's it's an accessory that's not for everybody. Just like not everybody bought a Vibs board for their pinball machine because not everybody plugs their PCs into the at games pinball machine. There's a lot of people yeah. that just play. They they purchase. They bought all the packs, and they have what a hundred and how many games? Hundred and forty nine games. And they're like, yeah. that's that's enough for me. I don't need to it, mess with the PC. It's bananas. Like, honestly, <laughs> there's not enough time to get good at every one. There's just too many. Uh, too many pinball games? Yeah. All right. Hold on, Mike. I'll, I'll wait till you're done. <laughs> this is so going to be a running gag for, like, the next two weeks. We're going to beat that horse to death. I don't I don't like this. <laughs> Mike is, well, you don't like what, brother? No, I don't like this. I feel like I'm treading water <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh well you guys you guys make fun of me too you know all the time when have we ever all the time you make fun of no. my clothes my clothes my shirts my hats <laughs> when do we make fun of your clothes and shirts you're not nostalgia <laughs> hey kev gretz got a great point michael b can't get good because he's always on the internet <laughs> it's true <laughs> oh kev Grant, you might win the show with that you can't all right, so let's get off of that. Uh, so minus that, um, let's uh, before we get into the most polarizing topic of the week, let's talk real quick about iArcade. So interesting enough, we had Jong on. We did a special show midweek. This is another reason we didn't do Super Game Room, dudes, Mike. We were on all week doing yeah. shows. You know what I mean? It's like I needed a break, right? And when Rostal just like, I can't do the show. And I was like, well, we got nothing left to talk about. Let's not do the show. And then an hour later, Terminator 2 got leaked. But that's a that's that's a horse of another color. But we did that show with John. Guys, did you enjoy that show, uh, that interview with John? We had a bunch of folks on, a bunch of uh, content creators. Uh, it was basically the show was designed to be kind of a celebration of their big sales event this summer. And unfortunately, Mike, well, fortunately for iArcade, but it kind of turned into almost a PBS special. Did you notice, like, Eight I arcade cabinets got bought during that live stream. That was very <laughs> you guys are you guys are awesome. That was so entertaining to us. The number of people who wrote in the live chat saying, I've enjoyed this show, or or hey, I just placed my order. Even Zohar, yeah. even Zohar bought an I arcade. Isn't that nuts? We got a five dollar super chat from Juan for four players. I'm gonna take two mini. Use some nice shelf brackets to connect them to my cab. There you go. Nice little creative idea right there. William Tinney says he loves his IRK. Michael B's a good sport. Oh, it, Michael, it's your turn. This next week, you guys can you know bust my balls all week. Uh, Kev Grad says it was an amazing show. A lot of people say it was a great show. Thanks so much, guys. Um, let's see here. Get some rad kickbacks. Nope, we don't get any kickbacks for stuff like that. Nor would I accept them. I love that guy. Kong Zara says it was a fun show. Zohar bought. Yeah, it was really cool. It was a little bit different. Um, and we did have a good Q&A session. And Jong once again yeah. confirmed that. And something that Mike and I both 100% agree on that needs to change on the IRK platform is they need to give us filtering effects for the screen. 100%. You know, we got to get the pixel smoothing off the retro games because um, it makes them look a little bit blurry. And if yeah. that's if that's something I've complained about for arcade one up, I got to make the same complaint for I arcade. I don't like pixel smoothing on retro games. Some people do. I respect that. I don't. I like my pixels sharp and looking like how they did back in the day. Mike, before you address that, Ty Fisher, five dollars. I'm in sales and marketing. Curious how excited Jong was about five I arcades being sold during the show. I would bet he will be back. Oh yeah, Jong. Jong loves hanging out with us. Um, I'm sure we'll have him on again in the future. Aeromod, $5 super chat just to say he loves the channel. Aeromod, we love you, you know? And why aren't you responding to my phone calls and text messages? What's wrong with you, bro? I'm over here with a broken heart. Um, Google Play is free with my phone, has dead cells, evil land, etc. Okay, but does Google Play have a joystick, 1.21 gigawatts of speakers? Is it an arcade machine? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're you can buy these games on a phone and have a phone experience, right? 
Yeah, the, 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 this conversation always just interests me. Yes, there's different ways to play some of these games. There's different ways to play arcade games. It, it all depends on which way you want to play it. The IR Arcade offers you an opportunity to play some of these games on an arcade cabinet. If that's not your experience, don't buy it. No big deal. Yeah. Adam12 says he had to leave. It felt like he was in the middle of a cult meeting. I don't know. I, I, I think he's talking about the IRK stream. Well, I'm sorry, man. We were having a lot of fun. We were having a lot of fun, and a lot of us like Jong's product. Uh, Dan Freeman says he hates playing games on my phone. Do you know how many games I play on my phone or tablet? Zero. Point it zero? Is not, it is 0. 0.0. It is not my preferred way to game. I like consoles, and I like arcades. I don't like playing on phones and even like this netflix thing that's coming out like are they going to release a controller for it or are you going to use your remote control to play these games like the netflix thing like a lot of people are hyped about it but i'm like yeah. if they don't have a controller like what's i'm did not gonna you, did you get your uh second vaccine yeah well you just play using your mind now oh yeah yeah that's <laughs> right yeah yeah, 5G. I, you know, I'm a little disappointed, Mike, because when you get your second, because I got the two shot one, right? The Moderna vaccine. Funky cold uh, Moderna. Yeah. Like I assumed after the second shot within a couple of months, I would turn into some sort of reptilian overlord. And it hasn't happened yet. Like the skin's yeah. not scaly. The skin's still pale, still pale Irish, no scales, hair's still here. I'm not a reptilian overlord yet. But maybe it just takes a little bit. Or maybe I just have an immune system like a tank. So uh, let's see here. Uh, vaccine will kill you. Uh, I want to be blamed for what... I don't know where... Where is this live chat going, guys? What are you guys talking about? So so my, my favorite meme from the past couple of weeks is... <laughs> So it's the you've seen the this is fine dog, right? So he's there in the fire and then he just sips the coffee and goes, This is fine, right? So, anyways, it's the dog in the fire. And then he goes to the second scene and instead of this is fine, he goes, Yeah, but I really want to know the long term effects of the fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> the long term effects. Steven and all these other guys say I might need a booster shot to turn into that reptilian overlord. Oh, they're all blaming you. They're saying Mike started it. Thank you, Michael. It's all Michael's fault. Oh, man. Um, all right, guys. So um, I Arcade, also tomorrow, tomorrow's Tuesday, right? Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, John's got a big announcement during his live stream. He's very excited about it. I think a lot of folks who follow that platform will be excited about it because what he announces, um, let's put it this way. He's going to announce something really cool. But what it means is if you think big picture, it opens the door. It opens another door for jong and the team over at i arcade kongs are us gave us a ten dollar super chat pitching in for the next set of costumes for another try on haul video and happy to see you not as grumpy anymore thanks for always promoting other content creators and the retro arcade community yes that is actually one of my personal mission statements for my channel is although i self-promote like you should i definitely promote everyone else because i want to see this community grow i want there to be more retro gaming youtube channels and all that kinds of stuff. And what's funny is, Mike, I got a really funny story about this is I've actually enjoyed uh, people complaining in arcade and gaming forums about the number of retro gaming YouTube channels. They're like, all these guys made videos and they're all about the same thing. I'm like, well, that's a good thing, Mike. That's a good thing because you know what? They're expanding the footprint of this community and these companies. And you know what's funny, Mike, is they don't go and complain what about the 9,000 YouTube channels that just released a Nintendo Switch video today? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's all the same goddamn video. Just because we're a smaller footprint doesn't mean we're doing the wrong thing, guys. We're just not as big as the modern gamers. Go ahead, my there, friend. There's a, there's a real bad thing out there in the community that uh, <laughs> people like to step on people on their way up. No one has a problem with, like, I love them, Cool Toy. If cool Toy made a video, everybody be like, yay, Doug. A smaller person that's just trying to get a footprint in the community makes a video. They're like, who is this guy? He has no business doing this. Doesn't he know Cool Toy already made a video? Everybody can make videos. Tons of people out there. Everybody have different opinions. You don't like everything? Don't watch it. But don't shit on somebody for making a video. That sucks, dude. Yeah. All the cool kids are in the retro community. I like where Muller Medic is going. Because, guys, let's be honest. There were literally, in my YouTube feed, 
a thousand videos that all had the same title like is the is the switch uh valve steam deck going to kill the nintendo switch like how many videos had that title that thumbnail all the modern gamers talking about the valve and the switch and oh my god let's not forget when the nintendo switch oled got released mike Nine thousand goddamn YouTube videos yeah. about the Nintendo Switch OLED. We make five Terminator Two videos, and the crowd goes wild. How dare they? It's too much coverage. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But th there's also there's also people out there with rules. It's like the um, what is it? The Reddit rules. Like it's cool to be a redditor that also does YouTube, but it's not cool to be a YouTuber that uses Reddit to get their videos across. So I was just like, oh, okay, well, I just won't go on Reddit anymore if you're going to be like that nuts about me posting videos here. Like, really shouldn't be that hard. And it's the same way with Facebook pages. If people are like, don't be posting your Facebook page, your videos here, I'm like, okay, I just won't be on your platform. That's fine. Yeah, hilarious, man, but it cracks me up. It's okay for 10,000 Nintendo Switch OLED videos to come out, but yeah. five five guys make a terminator 2 video and they're we're now a bunch of assholes come on no it, again it, it, like here's the thing it, no one has a problem with the bigger channels making switch videos it's they dunk on the guys trying to get pie they're like you have no business doing this because rgt spawn wave dreamcast guy made videos but they dunk on the little guy I, I don't get it like they try to hit people on the way up yeah ridiculous well guys we're going to move into our most polarizing topic that'll take us through to the end of the show right after this if you're new to the channel if you want to support retro gaming do us a favor guys consider hitting that subscribe button and also giving us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the i hate monday show <laughs> Now, Mike, the most polarizing topic of last week was the Terminator 2 Arcade 1-Up cabinet, and I know you talked about this for an hour tonight. I don't know what the consensus was from your show. What, what, do you, what was the vibe, you think? Uh, are people going to be getting this cabinet, or is this cabinet, if it does officially become a product, people aren't as excited about it? Like, what do you, what do you, what do you think, Mike? How did, what was the vibe of your stream? Uh, a little bit all over the place, right? Because I don't have as many um, multi-key people um, that watch me in that stream as much as like watch Super Game Room do more so. So there was a lot less like, oh, that sucks. You could just play it on a multi-key, which uh, comes up a lot. And that's fine. That's one way to do it. Uh, a lot of the conversation was in the middle because people are upset because it looks like the controls are going to be different than the original cabinet, that they're going with light guns that detach as opposed to that kind of like yoke Uzi that the original cabinet used. So uh, people are a little concerned about that, concerned about some issues with uh, the screen size and other things, but mainly people are just really excited that Eric came one up, pulled off the title and they're excited to add it to their library. So uh, a lot of excitement, but uh, a lot of people in the middle and then the multi K people, I don't think this is going to win them over. All right. So, guys, I just threw the poll in the live chat. Some folks in the live chat, they said, Pete Ups, put the poll in the chat. Here it comes. I said, Will is Arcade One Up Terminator 2 must buy? And let's uh, let's let the votes come in and let's see where that stands. So while they're voting, let's keep chatting about it. So um oh, I, uh, before I ahead. forget, before yeah. I forget. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I don't know if I sent it here. Uh, let me see if I can bring your YouTube show up so I can throw this in the chat here because there was a second leak tonight. Uh, I don't know if you got it. Another leak from who? Yeah, you'll see in a second. Let me just get my YouTube up so I can put it in the chat. Uh, but I'm dumb. I just sent it to you in Messenger and then you could do it that way. You can put it up. But anyways, there, uh, yeah. There's, a, leak I, of, a, a leak of what? Uh, Terminator 2, again, another uh, retailer put it up, so I just sent it to you in our message, so you can share it as well. What? Yeah. Why would so why would someone do that if it had already been put up and taken down? I, I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, I just sent you the link, so uh, yes, this is coming up from another Canadian retailer for everybody saying fake, fake, fake. Uh, well, here you go. <laughs> oh my god, guys, look at this. Uh, did, did anyone make a video or say anything about this yet? No, not yet. All right, well, guys, check this out. Hot off the presses, world debut exclusive TSC, today's shopping choice, which is a another Canadian retailer 
once again has a listing up for the Terminator 2 arcade one up cabinet. Are you kidding me, bro? Yeah. Did and there's actually, there's actually a release date on this one, too. So it looks like we're going to get this in December, December 2nd. December. All right. Let's go down. Oh, look at that. Pick up yep. date, December. Guys, it's coming this year. It's coming this year. Shoeshine says 19K Fox posted it earlier. If that's true, congrats. Uh, 19K Fox. We love 19K. You know, I got to get him on my show. I love that kid. I want to get him on my show. I think him and I could have a great discussion. Um, uh, so you can see down here, it has an on-screen game delection menu. On-screen game delection menu. Okay, so selection spelt wrong. Selection it's, menu. It's yeah. selection. Let's go full screen here for the audience. Uh, plugs into an AC outlet. Easy assembly. Two guns with force feedback. Uh, real feel arcade controls. And Mike... This makes it a must-buy. Coinless operation. Coinless operation, baby. So when you get to that uh, helicopter stage like I was at the other night, you will be in such pain, but you can just keep coining in. <laughs> uh, I'm looking to see if they mention anything about additional games. I mean, it has a game selection menu. Yeah, yeah. But so okay. obviously you don't need a selection menu to do one. Rubicon Alpha gave us a five dollar super chat. Says he's getting burned out on nothing but leaks and little else from Arcade One Up. So bring up this comment from John D. Loves you. <laughs> Where's that? Uh, in fairness, T two is still playing in Canadian theaters. Come oh, on. that's that's <laughs> hilarious. If oh, I can't find his comment in the live chat. Again, all right, let's let's check our live poll. All right, guys, we only got one hundred twelve uh, votes in three minutes. Let's take a look at the results. Is Arcade One Up Terminator 2 must buy? Mike, check this out. Out of 112 people who answered our live poll, 36% said yes, 64% said no, at least out of this community of folks watching the show. What do you think yeah. about those results? That, that Pretty accurate. I mean, uh, we're at a point, like you mentioned earlier, where we got to be a lot more selective. So, um, you know, people are going to be, I think everybody's kind of at the same point where they want to make sure the game's exactly right. And this cabinet does have a couple things going against it. The fact that it doesn't look like the controls are accurate to the original cabinet. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Can't really say much more than that. I mean, I, I'm excited for it. This is one I wanted. And I'm waiting to get more information on how it plays. It, we don't know it's just one game. Uh I, I will say one of the other things that I brought up on my show was the fact that it does have a game selection menu. And I think it was Super Leaf 64 brought up the point that maybe they could throw another mid, midway shooting game on it and mention Carnival. Like if this had Carnival and I forget the other game you mentioned, like to me, that would be incredible. Like I, I would be interested in a Carnival cab by itself. So this is interesting. Uh, it does have three buttons in the middle. So you might have... But look, here's your player two start. There's your player one start. Yep. What are these for? One of the other games. And obviously, because look, uh, right here, you can't see my mouse cursor, but uh, you see a little black nub on the yep. uh, on the picture on the right. That's obviously your grenade button. Yep. So yeah, there's got to be more games on this cabinet, guys. We just don't know what it's going to be and what these buttons are for. They're definitely not there just to look pretty. Uh, the grenade buttons are on the side. If you look at the photo on the right, you can kind of see the little gray dot. Let's go full screen for folks. You can see the grenade button. You can kind of see it. Yeah. I know uh, it might be hard if you're watching on your cell phone or something, but. Um, so this is interesting, Mike. So I bet by nine o'clock tomorrow, this listing will be taken down as well. What do you think? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure if it will. Uh, I mean, cat's kind of out of the bag right now. I think with, uh, Indigo, it was a little bit of a different situation. Shop, uh, shopping channel is different anyways. If they took orders on this tonight, because the difference with uh, the shopping channel and Indigo, you couldn't place an order. Shopping channel might might have got the go-ahead to just go with it, right? Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, I really was hoping that this website would spoil what other games were on here. <laughs> that would have no. been great. I, I I don't think we're going to be in that territory. I think that's the kind of thing that we're going to find out later on. It's like the second game on the Simpsons cabinet. 
Uh, all right, so B Dubs wants us to do a Tron poll. He's given us a two dollar super chat. Since he donated to the channel, I feel obligated. So, what should our 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 poll be for the Tron cabinet, guys? Are are you guys uh, a one up Tron? Must buy? Yes, no. I'm trying to keep these uh, simple instead of yeah. Like, I, out. I don't understand his comment exactly. Unique controls don't emulate well. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. Because, you know, playing um, Tron on, like, the At Games with Glenn's Tron stick, which is kind of like what they're using, a similar knockoff of Glenn's stick, Yeah, works great. Great, yeah. Exper great experience. No complaints. But then again, it's not Glenn's stick, right? So we don't, yeah. know, how we don't know how good the arcade one-up stick is going to be. Uh, but, guys, let us know in the live chat if you're picking up the Tron cabinet now me although you know tron was like a movie what year did the movie come out mike oh jeez, uh, 80 I, I i don't know i'd just be guessing i think it's like 83 yeah and i was born in 80 me too so tron movie <laughs> 1982 1982 all yeah. right so like i was an infant when this movie came out and the tron hype and all that stuff so by the time I was growing up playing video games, I didn't play Tron. So uh, Tron doesn't hit it for me. I've played Tron, you know, on these machines and stuff. And, like, it just, to me, it's not that great. And, guys, don't don't kill me. If you guys yeah. love Tron, I respect you. It just, it didn't work for me. Um, four levels on repeat, John. Um, guys, let's not talk about politics in the live chat, guys. It's ridiculous. Um yeah, we don't all have Glenn's stick. There you go. Uh, Tron is a must-have for any arcade room. Alfred is on Team Tron. Yeah. Uh, well, I mentioned it on my stream tonight. Like, I want Tron, but for the wrong reason. I don't want Tron to play the game because I'm like you. I just I don't get it. Like, I haven't found appeal for it. I just want it because cabinet's really pretty, and I think it would look good in my arcade. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get some more votes in the live chat. We only got 92 responses. Don't be afraid if your no's or yeses are, are, are leading the pack. Let's get some honest feedback here in the live chat. Let's at least get over 100 responses on the poll before we close it. I'm actually really enjoying that YouTube supports these now, Mike. It's yeah. going to make us asking the community questions so much easier. So hopefully you guys are enjoying them. I'm super hyped about them because now everyone gets to use these, right? Super cool. All right, we got over 105 responses. I'll end the poll. 27% said yes, 73% said no, Mike. So once again, only a third of my audience here is a, is a must-buy with these Arcade 1-Up products. Do you think it's because I have a predominantly multi-cade audience? Hard to say. I, I can't say that for sure. I mean, there's some reality that even a lot of people that are big Arcade 1-Up fans are a little down on Arcade 1-Up right now with the price increases and stuff like that. So a bit of an interesting time for them. Yeah. So um, what are the what are the possibilities that um, Arcade One Up paid the money for Aerosmith? What are the possibilities to get Revolution zero point zero? Uh, I'm yeah. going to be honest with you. There's no way that Revolution X is on this cab that you think Aerosmith signed off, and then Arcade One Up paid all the money not just to get Aerosmith in that game, but also all the licensed music and everything attached to it. If it's not the marquee game on that cabinet. Yep. John D loves you. You have a predominantly male audience. Well, thanks so much. Paul Minderman. Nope. Not, no, no multi cater prices are just too high. Greatly appreciate that. And this, this is what sucks, Mike, because you know what, as you guys know, I am, we're in the process. We're still getting bids and we're getting permits done. Instead of buying a new house, we're expanding our loft. And like I've told you guys in other shows, I'm going to completely close off this second floor opening that connects to the loft. And it's going to add me another three, like, what is, what is 20 by, what is 20 by 30, Mike? What is 20 by 30 in square footage? How much is that? It's pretty big. Well, I, I can't do basic math here, guys. What is it? Again? That's a, that's a large amount of space, buddy. And that's yeah, huge. 20 yeah. times 30. Well, 600. Yeah. About another 600 square feet. <clears throat> um, and What's cool is I'd love to fill it up with more arcade machines, Mike. And I would love, guys, I'm for people, I've been getting some flack from some people in some of these communities. They're like, P-Dubs is a hater now. No, P-Dubs is honest. P-Dubs doesn't want to pay 
these prices. But I guarantee you guys, if if X Men was five hundred dollars instead of six ninety nine, I would have bought it. I would have yeah. bought X Men. Yeah. Um, Tron, I probably would not have bought because it just doesn't do it for me. But it's gorgeous. I mean, you got to admit, guys, that Tron cabinet is gorgeous looking. This Terminator Two cabinet, if this thing was five hundred bucks, I would buy it. Yeah, we're, we're, well, you're even more so than I am. Like my magic number with these arcade one ups, where I seem to lose all control, is five ninety nine Canadian. Uh, the price point that you're saying is with a hundred dollar price increase, that four ninety nine mark. So I mean, that's that's a hundred dollar price increase over the three ninety nine. So uh, I'm even a little cheaper than you. I don't I don't really want to pay more than five ninety nine for these cabinets, mm-hmm. Canadian. Yep. So Paul, and I've seen Paul's comments on my channel in the past, and uh, guys, I, I do want Arcade One Up to succeed. I do want to continue uh-huh. buying their products, but I, I'm, I'm kind of drawn. I put my line in the sand. You know what I mean, Mike? Like I need, I need, you really need to bring it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like bring it. Like if that T2 cabinet does have Aerosmith Revolution X on it, right? And some more stuff that justifies the high price. Carnival? Carnival? Yeah, maybe eh. but either way you gotta you gotta really bring it you know they gotta bring 19 inch monitors they gotta bring in better buttons and sticks they gotta bring i mean hell even you could even say even though the speakers and arcade one-ups are okay you could even put better speakers in the, that are there now and you could sell that as a feature you know what i mean there's there's stuff they can do that really matters that would justify the cost adding an overpriced stool and a light up deck protector does not justify a two hundred dollar price increase to me. You know what I mean? And that's just my personal opinion. Just my personal opinion. Yeah, I mean, people want different things. I think I I really don't like the decision to add the stool bundle in there. And I've said this a couple times because you're already doing a price increase, but then you're adding the top bundle to that, which makes the price increase seem even bigger. So you said you were fine with that five hundred dollar mark. If they just released the cab with the light up marquee at that five uh, light up marquee and the riser at that five hundred dollar mark, you'd be cool. But of course, they didn't give you that option. They had to add another hundred dollars and add a tin sign. Oh yeah, the tin sign. On. But they never should have done that. If you're going to raise prices, just raise the price. Just don't then raise it again with add-ons. Like it just made it unbuyable, basically for some people. It made it too much to take. Yeah, like for the Jason. Jason, he's got a YouTube channel. He covers a ton of Arcade 1-Up products. And Jason, I would agree with you. If those were included in this new pricing structure, absolutely. Absolutely, I would support it, and I would buy these cabinets. But now, as is... Okay. What's Jason's channel again? It's Between One Fern, isn't it? That's the name yeah, of the channel? <laughs> yeah, it's the Arcade 1-Up Next to a Fern Review channel, which we love the Fern. The Fern hasn't grown at all, though. I'm, I'm really worried about the, the Fern. The tin sign is BS. I absolutely, absolutely agree. Just add quality equipment, ditch the gimmicks. Absolutely. This is all I'm asking for. And I will pay you $600, $700 a cabinet. I've also said this, and uh, P-Dubs, you've said this too, that like if John came out tomorrow, And in one of his live streams explained, I'm sorry, guys, you know, price of materials is going up. The price of licenses, yada, yada, yada. I have to increase prices on either the cabinet or the games to get by. We all support John and appreciate him. So, like, we would understand where he's coming from. If Eric Cade one up took the time just to make a video with Scott, David, John D., on their own channel and explain why the price increase is yeah. happening or just talk to the community. It doesn't need to be a live show where they put themselves out there and cause like put themselves in a bad situation. Just make a video, something, and you know, maybe they would garner more support towards these price increases. The fact that they're raising the prices, then adding in the higher bundle cost and like not communicating at all. It's really alienated people. There's a better way they could have handled the situation. Yeah. They're in. Me too. So I don't want people thinking I'm an arcade one up hater. Arcade one up though only made up about 20 to 25% of my channel content. You know what I mean, Mike? So I cover a lot of companies, a lot of products. I've done over nearly 400 and some videos and like a hundred, less than a hundred are arcade one up videos. So like, this is not an arcade one up only channel. So I'm not worried about my channel, its direction, you know, where we're going to go from here. You know what I mean? If we make less arcade one-up content, it's just a shame. I feel like I'm not going to be able to because I just 
guys, I, I can't get behind this pricing. I can't lie to my audience. I can't tell you to run out and buy these cabinets if I don't personally feel they're worth $800 a pop. You know what I'm saying? $700 a pop. So I'm, I'm just not going to do it. We got a $5 super chat from uh, Old Dude Gamer. Any verified rumors about Dragon's Lair, Space Ace, or Killer Instinct? Man, that, that cabinet must really reek. <laughs> so uh, Killer Instinct was part of the uh, Chapters Indigo leaks. Um, they put it there. It's going to be the same price. I was surprised about this. It's going to be the same price as Turtles. And even though it, I thought it would be the same price as Big Blue, where it's only a two-player cabinet, but it is going to be the top price point. So you're looking at $6.99 US, and it comes with a stool that only has, uh, what's his name, the skeleton character? I'm not a big Killer Instinct guy. Um. Uh, Wait, not What's the, oh, the, oh my God. Um, I keep wanting to say Cinder, but Cinder's the fire guy. Yeah. <laughs> what is yeah. That? Oh my God. Uh, I hate it when you put me on the spot. And I'm lie. sorry, brother. I, I think his name is Skeleton McSkeleton. Spinal. 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 So Thanks, it, only has, it only has Spinal emulating the side of the cabinet. So it does come with a stool. It looks like it's going to be $6.99. So um, other than that, we don't really have any other updates. You know what's really funny is, guys, when you're live and you know people are watching you, you get tongue-tied. I was live. It was a stream I did like a week or two ago. And at the end of the show, I always say, like, thanks for hanging out upstairs with us or thanks for subscribing. And if you go back and watch that episode, like, I couldn't remember how to say thanks for hanging out upstairs with us. And that's like one of my channel catchphrases. Yeah. I'm like, thanks for um <laughs> tuning in. Thanks for, um, you know what I mean? I was all over the yeah. place. Yeah. Oh, man, anything can happen when you're live. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, and going back to Dragon's Lair, for anybody waiting for an update on Dragon's Lair, I don't expect that you're going to get one because most of the leaks and the information that's going out are all based on retail releases. Dragon's Lair is going to be a arcade one-up uh, website-only exclusive. So uh, I think we will get it in Canada through a couple of retailers, but we haven't seen anything yet. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah Killer Instinct. Um Hopefully I can get that one because out of this whole wave, that was the one I wanted the most, Mike, as yeah. you know. So hopefully I can get that one. Alan's Ageless Arcade says it gets worse when you get to 50. I'm, I'm 40 now, man. So, yeah, I'm dreading it. I'm dreading it. Um, so final thoughts on Terminator 2. We did our poll. Seems like this group of folks, only a third of them are interested in it. Uh, Michael B., you're very interested in it. Yep. Um, me, um, I, I want to get behind it, but I can't, um, hopefully I'll get it on sale. Maybe I'll, maybe they'll have a sale and I'll get it on sale. So I want to say something, not a sales pitch. Please don't take it this way. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I, I wanted to shoot her cab so bad. I just couldn't bring myself to buy Buck Hunter. I'm not a hunter. Yeah. I've never played it. I have zero nostalgia for it, but I want a shooting cab so bad. When T2 was announced and at that price point with all these price increases, it's only $50 more than what Big Buck Hunter is here in Canada. I was like, well, you know, my nostalgia is running over. I've got FOMO really bad. I'm all in. I'm excited for it, but I get where other people are apprehensive completely. Yeah. Uh, guys, do us a favor. Give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the show. We'd greatly appreciate that. That would be wonderful. Uh, only shooter I'd pay 800 for is Time Crisis. I'm super old. I'm 52. Been playing games since 77. Congratulations, Tom. Know what else happened in 1977? Star Wars was released. Oh, yeah. <laughs> BA says, great show, guys. We greatly appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the conversation tonight. We managed to talk about a lot of great topics. Uh, and we're gearing up for hopefully a good announcement by Jong tomorrow that will hopefully open the door to what's coming next with I arcade. Um, and then also um, we're hoping on having a really big, really big uh, episode of super game room dudes. We're finally going to get the return of a character you've all been clamoring for, which I'm pretty hyped about it. So he's finally coming back guys. I'll let you speculate on who it is. Is it going to be Detroit love at Arby's? No, is it going to be, is it going to be Michael Chef Flan Boy RD? Can you do Can you do another poll? Uh, another poll, uh, if you want yeah. me to. Can you ask the audience if they think that you've had sex while wearing the Darkwing Dubs uniform? 
Oh my god. <laughs> uh okay, has P dubs. Uh we're gonna do it this way. Done it as Darkwing dubs. Why are you as why are you even bringing this up? Because I know the answer. I just want to see what they do. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because we, we talked about this when we went off the air. Yeah. All right. We'll leave that poll up real quick, guys. Do you think I wore that costume and did the nasty? Let us know in the live chat. That'd be so cool. Um, wow. The votes are coming in. 41 votes. We're at 83%. Yes. Uh, keep them coming, guys. 64 votes, 77%. Yes, man, you guys must think I'm a naughty, naughty, nasty man. Like, honestly, um, we'll just give it another minute here, Mike. I think it's 79%. Oh, man, this is overwhelmingly going in a weird direction. <laughs> See, this is where this is where Mike gets to um, get to get gets to get me back. All right, we'll go ahead and end the poll there. Looks like 80% of the of, of people out there think I would dress as Darkwing Dubs and do the nasty. You guys are a bunch of freaks out there. But Michael B., you know the truth. Go ahead and reveal it. P-Dubs likes to get dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> My poor wife. My poor wife. I walk in the bedroom. I walk, I walk in the bedroom, Bill and all. And I go, let's get dangerous. And we got dangerous. Uh, we, got, <laughs> we, got, we got dangerous. That's for sure. All right, guys. Well, you guys are always awesome. Make sure you join the Loft Army. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out the Super Game Room Dudes every Friday night over on our Super Game Room Dudes YouTube channel. Give Michael B. Um, a subscription as well. Michael B. has been putting in a lot of hard work. Uh, covering the arcade and gaming community. He deserves it, even though he needs a plastic water bottle with a sippy cup on it. Oh, there you go. All right, guys, uh, we love you. And uh, until next time, we'll see you on the web.